In example one, we see that we have 4 raised to the power of a negative 3. A negative exponent tells us to take the term or the uh, number and move it to the other part of the fraction. In other words, this is really neg a 4 to the negative 3 over 1, but we want this to go down. 4 to the power of negative 3 has to go to the other part of the fraction to resolve the negative exponent. So when it goes to the denominator, it becomes 4 to the positive 3. What's left in the numerator is just 1. Now you could resolve it by saying 4 times 4 times 4, which we know is 64. So really this is 1 64th. In example 2, we're doing the same thing, but this time we're taking a negative 3, and we're going to take it to the other side of the fraction. Remember, if you have a whole number, you just put it over the uh, number 1 to make it into a fraction. So this time I'm going to take this negative 3 to the negative 4, I'm going to put it in the other part of my fraction. It's going to be negative 3 raised to the power of a positive 4. I'm remembering to include my negative inside parentheses since it was in parentheses in the numerator. I want to say negative 3 raised to the power of 4. I've got four negatives, an even number. I'm going to have a positive answer. 3 times 3 is 9, and 3 times 3 would be 9. 9 times 9 would be 81. That's my denominator. 1 is all that's in the numerator. So it's really 1 80, 81st. What about when you raise an entire fraction to a negative exponent? Now, that's what that's trying to show us, um, is that 1 half is raised to the power of negative 5. We can think about it as each one of those raised to the power of negative 5. In other words, 1 raised to the negative 5th over 2 raised to the negative 5th. And we, you would see quickly that we really have to switch sides to change the exponents to positive. So my 1 to the 5th, become positive it has to go down. 2 to the negative fifth to become positive has to go up. And all I have in my numerator now is 1 multiplied 5 times, which is just 1. In my, I'm sorry, my denominator. In my numerator, I have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which would be 32, which is really just the whole number 32. In example 4, we have to be very careful to see that only the x is being raised to the negative exponent. So in other words, my 7 has to stay where it is, and my x, to get a positive exponent, has to go down. So it's really 7 over x cubed. Remember, all we're doing with negative exponents is we're moving them to the opposite side of the fraction. To resolve negative exponents, to make them positive, we just have to change, move the term up or down, and then the exponent becomes positive. Take an exa uh, example 5, we have 4 to the negative 1, which would really be 1 fourth, because that 4 had to go down, plus 4 to the negative 2, well that's going to be 1 over 4 squared. Well, can we finish this out? I mean, that we've resolved the negative exponents, let's just finish this problem. Really what we have here is 1 over 4, plus 1 over 4 times 4, 16. Now, I can add these fractions if I get a common denominator. I'm going to change 1 fourth to 16th, and then I'm going to add 1 16th to it. How do I do that? Well, I add numerators. They're over the same denominator, so I end up with 4 plus 1, which is 5, over 16. Example 6 has two negative exponents, and really it's a simple matter of switching sides of the fraction. To make p to the negative fifth positive, I would take it down to the denominator. To make q to the negative fourth positive, I would take it up to the numerator, and I end up with p to the fourth over, I'm sorry, q to the fourth over p to the fifth. Example 7 has a negative 1. Now that's not a negative exponent, it's just a negative number. It's over p to the negative 4, which I need this one to go up to become p to the 4th. So it really is becomes negative 1 times p to the 4th. In the denominator, there's nothing left. I can put a 1. But what is my answer? Negative p to the 4th in the simplest form. Now, in example 8, I have a bunch of p's that I need to combine. This is really in the numerator p squared times p to the 1st. Well, that is really p cubed. Remember, we would multiply the same base with exponents, we add the exponents, and it's over p to the negative 1. Well, I want to get rid of this p to the negative 1, I have to take it up. So I'm going to say that's really the same as p cubed times p to the positive 1. And in the denominator, I have nothing left but 1, so I don't really have to list that. This is p to the 4th. Now, 
example 9 gets a little more complicated. We've got x squared raised to the power of 8. Well, let's do that first. Remember, when we raise an exponent to another one, we multiply. So I'm going to say x squared raised to the power of 8 is x, uh, two, is x to the power of 2 times 8, or x to the power of 16. And then it's still multiplied times x up there. In the denominator, it's over x to the power of 9. Now I just have to simplify my x's. x to the 16th times x to the power of 1 is x to the power of 17. This time when I multiply, I add exponents, remember, over x to the power of 9. And now I'm dividing exponents. So I'm going to subtract 17 minus 9 is going to give me x to the power of 8. I leave it in my numerator because that's where the larger exponent was. Example 10, each of the terms inside the parentheses needs to be raised to the power of negative 3. When I, when I raise an exponent to a power, I multiply. Let's do that before we resolve these negative exponents. I would say x to the fifth times negative 3. I'm sorry, times the negative 3 would give me a negative 15. x to the negative 15th. Y to the third times that negative one third or negative three is going to give me y to the negative nine. And now I want to resolve the negative exponents. I'm going to take them both to the denominator of my fraction and make them positive. What's left in the numerator, there's nothing, but I have to put a number one. If there's just one in the denominator, it makes it a whole number. But if there's nothing left in the numerator but a one, we have to put it, otherwise it becomes a whole number two, and that's not correct. Example 11 says y to the fourth squared. Remember, we're multiplying these exponents, so we'll say y to the power of 8 over y to the 12th. And now I'm going to subtract exponents. I'm going to say um, 8 minus 12 is 4. I'll place that in the denominator because that's where the larger exponent was. In the numerator, just the number 1. Example 12, we're going to be multiplying these two terms. And let's do the coefficients first. Negative 2 times 3 will be negative 6. Let's do our x terms, our x variables, x cubed times x to the negative 1. Remember when we multiply terms, same base with exponents, we add. So instead of multiplying these exponents, I'm going to add them. I'm going to say 3 minus 1 is x to the power of 2. Now I'm going to multiply y to the negative 4 times y to the positive 1, add again, negative 4 plus 1 would give me a negative 3. So I've got a negative exponent that I don't want to leave there. I'll leave negative 6, x squared in the numerator. I'll take y cubed to the bottom, to the denominator, to make it a positive exponent. Example 13, I'm going to be raising these exponents to a power. The power is 2. I realize it's written a little funny. That's the way the um, math type actually puts it there. But what we're saying is x to the power of negative 2 raised to the power of positive 2. Well, I once again will multiply those exponents. So that will be x to the negative 4. y to the power of 4 raised to the power of 2 is going to be y to the 4 times 2, which is 8. That's my numerator. Let's do the same thing in the denominator. We've got to raise those to the power of 2. x cubed to the power of 2 is going to be x to the 3 times 2, or 6. y to the 7th raised to the power of 2 is y to the 7 times 2, or 14. Now I can simplify these, but the best thing for me to do is to take care of these negative exponents first. I've got to take this x to the negative 4 down. What does it look like? Well, I'd have y to the 8th. And I'd have x to the 4th times x to the 6th times y to the 14th. When I combine these terms, I end up with x to the 10th in the denominator. And look, my y to the 8th and y to the 14th, I'm going to have to subtract y's. I'm going to end up with y to the 6th in the denominator. Nothing's in the numerator. I have to place the number 1. Now, scientific notation is how we abbreviate writing huge numbers. And the thing you have to remember is where you put the decimal point and which direction you move it in when you resolve scientific notation. This number, 78,000 in example 14, we want to make into, we want to write it in scientific notation. So we want to place the decimal point after the first significant digit. That's always the way it is. So we want to have a 7.8. That's our number. And then it's going to be times 10 to the power of something. 
And when you're resolving scientific notation, you count decimal places for each exponent, uh, for the exponents. In other words, I'm going to move it uh, to the right. The decimal point, it would be moved to the right four places. One, two, three, let's see, one, two, three, and four. For, to make this into scientific notation. In other words, I had to sort of figure out where did this decimal point begin and where was it going to end. It would move from 7.8, it would move four places to the right, that's why I say times 10 to the positive 4. Let's look at example 15. This one is a very small decimal. It has a point and lots of zeros. I still want my decimal point, my new one for scientific notation, to go after the first significant digit. That's the first digit that is not a zero. So I'm going to put my point at, right after the one. It'll be 1 1.7. And then it's going to always be multiplied times 10. But this time, I have to move it, when I resolve the exponents or scientific notation, I have to move it to the left in a negative direction. So I would count how many places would I have to move it to get back to that original number. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight to get there. So it's x or 10 to the negative eight. Now, writing a scientific notation is a little tricky, but resolving it's fairly simple. What I'm saying is I want to move my decimal point in number 16. I'm going to move it six places in a positive direction. So I write one, one, six. I moved it one, two. I'm going to have four zeros, two, three, four. And then I need to put in some commas so I can read this number. It's 1,160,000. In example 17, I want to move my decimal point in a negative direction. So I'm going to go to the left, four places. Well, I've got one place with the six, and then I'm going to have to add three leading zeros. It's always a good idea after you've written your number to check it. I would have moved it from this location, one, two, three, four, and count your decimals to make sure that you've got it right. 